was doing a lot of good stuff. He built, he's a contractor. But what I'm, what I'm saying is that life can change very drastically. He was going to another occasion and then another car hit his car and spun and then a truck run him over and he died. So, but the good things, the good news is that we understand that as Moraz sang, Jesus broke the barrier. The grave cannot hold the saints. There is power in the resurrections of Jesus. And praise be to God. I'll let you say a few things before we'll go into the, uh, you know, we have a very wonderful Bible study. Every other Wednesday, we had a Bible study last Wednesday, this past Wednesday, <laughs> Battle of Armageddon. We have a good uh, number of uh, attendants coming. Every other Wednesday, which is the first Wednesday and the third Wednesday, start at 7. So if you can, uh, if you have time, come and study the Word of God. We, we look at the world. There's no doubt it comes to an end. It's a crazy world we live in. But the Bible has a glimpse of what is happening now. And the very closeness of the coming of the Lord. And lastly, this afternoon will be a VPS training at the conference office at 2 o'clock. <laughs> if you want to join, let's go to the VPS training and then at the conference. Because we're looking forward for the great VPS uh, in this summertime. The, the date will be announced. Can we say amen that we need to, isn't that wonderful to see our children are coming and participating in our worship service? Praise be to God. Thank you for coming. And thank you that we're going to share the love of Christ through the message of the word. This morning. Would you join me as we pray? Precious Father God in heaven. You know us. You know every thought. You see us. Nothing is hidden before you. Dear Lord, we worship a living God. A resurrected God. Thank you, Lord, for the scripture that capture and even speak for us and hear the voice of God as we read and meditate on the word. Dear Lord, we pray that may our worship this morning and even the reflection on the word, may the spirit of the Lord speak for us, illuminate in our hearts the voice of the Lord to be heard. Forgive us, Lord, because oftentimes our, our self, our thoughts, would be in the way of the moving of the Spirit. So we pray, dear Lord, be with us this morning. In your precious name we pray. Amen. We have taken a little journey in this chapter 12 for the book of Hebrew. We know that we still in the beginning of the new year, 2023. We know we're taking a journey. We're in a marathon, in a race. Whether you like it or not, we are in a journey. A journey one step closer to the coming of the Lord or one step to the grave. Either way, we are in a journey of life. You may look at it as maybe a, an ambitious for a finance 
prosperity as we talked about in the lesson this morning. Whether we are in a search for a recovery of a relationship. Or whether we try to build our our close walk with the Lord, a spiritual journey. We mentioned this is the beginning of the year and I would like to follow through. How's your journey so far? Very good. Praise the Lord. But you need, we need to be grounded on the word of God. Because this world is just like we are being tossed and turned by the winds that challenge us. I entitled the message this morning, Demands of Discipline. Demands of discipline motivates the drive of success. A robust performance of endurance. Intense urgency of a relentless commitment. Those Expressions can be sound so nice. It is easy to say. But the reality is challenging. A resilience performance of excellence. Excellence for what? We are in a journey. This year 2023. As we say that in the passage that we speak about, I would like to echo again, as Loretta read beautifully. Consider him who endures such hostility from sinners against himself, Jesus himself. Lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortations which speaks to you as to sons. My sons do not despise the justicing of the Lord. Nor do not, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he justens. He scourges every son whom he Receive. I would like to remind you, when there is no discipline, when there is no laws and order, our life will be in chaos. Would you say amen? But our society commands for a freedom, a freedom without boundaries, a freedom to express how we feel about God without Perimeters and bring out God's plan. This chapter 12 of the book of Hebrew. We say that it's a spiritual game plan of 2023. Do you have a plan? Have you followed through your plan? We also consider this is a race, a race of faith to hold on to the faith that we have. Whether a journey, whether a marathon, or whether building a relationship, it demands a discipline. This passage has a context of a athlete's that runs the race. I mentioned to you several times because I love this historical event of a runner by the name of Derek Redmond. 1920, 1992 Olympians. He's a British runners, 400 meters runners. He was determined or he was projected he's going to be another Olymp Olympians to get the gold medal. 
He was favored for all his, his training. Until he comes to the semifinals, one of his challenged, the best candidates for the finals. While he was running the 400 meters, which is of his favorite race, when it comes to the half of the 400 meter run, he felt a warm, painful run down his right thigh. And the next step could not hold him, but he collapsed on the field track, track field. And the multitude of people were, wow. As he collapsed on the field, the other athletes just passes him. Derek tried to get up. He fell down again. And the whole multitude of people were just gasps every moment. Try to encourage Derek in his agony while trying to finish the race. While out in a multitude of people, another person tried to make his way through. Pushing away the crowd and make his way through the security. And then he comes to Derek and he said, Derek, do you need to finish this? Derek, look, he was his dad. Shoulder him and he said, Dad, I would like to finish the race. The whole world with the cameras watching. While a son and a father leaping and hopping. Leaping and hopping until he crossed the finish line. Even though he was disqualified because he got an assistance. But the whole world applauds the courage of an Olympian to finish the race with the help of his father. My friend, we're running a race. It demands a discipline. We cannot make it through with our own effort, even though we strain, even though we discipline ourselves. But we need a whole group, support groups of people that loves and cheers and encourages along the way. How is your journey this year? Do you have a set of groups that support you and cheers with you? Or do you have a set of people that tears you down as you journey this year? The passage use the context of runners and Olympians, athletes. But the Bible tells us that demands of a discipline, it requires endure hostilities from the world of sinning, world of sinners. We live in the world Oftentimes, we are so scared to look at what is happening in our world around us. What you say? The only hope for us, Jesus, come soon. We live in a world that is so hostile to the Christians believing, beliefs. They threat the Christian beliefs. Hostiles, but the Bible tells us endure the hostilities from sinners against himself or endure the hostility of the sinful world or endure the sinful nature. How could that be, Pastor? How could that be? I mentioned the last sermons. Enduring hostilities could be 
external hostilities, what our eyes could, can see, what our hands can touch, what's around us, that's external hostilities. Even our own close relatives, spouses can be hostiles to our journey and our relationship with God. What do you say? External, external relation, hostilities. And also there are internal hostilities. What are those internal, inter, internal hostilities? We have our own demons within ourselves. What do you say? We try to solve all the world problems, but within us we are not have peace with ourselves. Internal hostilities. How can we find peace and how can we wrestle with the hostilities of our human nature and even the world itself surround us? I mentioned this illustration in the last sermon about Ivan Fernandez, a runner from Spain, compete in a cross-country marathon. The whole best of the world will go to certain country where they could compete each other, the cross-country run. Ivan always come second, try to catch up with the runner from Kenya. Kenya always provides greatest run in the world. But he always tried to catch up with him, and he said, no, I cannot catch up with him. His name is Abel Mutai. Until Mutai entered the last stretch, and then he circled, and then he come to a confusion because of the Spanish language. <laughs> and then he stopped short of 10 meters before the finish line. Every competitor always competes to win. He's... But Ivan, when he saw the confusions, he nudged Abel Mutai to finish the race. The question is why? Why didn't he just pass him and claim the winner? Why didn't he pass and claim the first to win the race? Why? Was he afraid about the, the news commentator that will, will drill about why did you do that? It's unfair. Why did he not finish the race? The coach was not happy with his decisions. Or did he finish, did he shove him to finish the race because of his pride? External hostilities and internal hostility is the one that we wrestle with it day in and day out, what you say. The book of Romans says, the good that I want to good, that I, the goodness I want to do, I end up doing what? Evil. The evil that I want to do, and I end up doing what? Evil. And he said, wretched me, wretched Man such as me, who can deliver me from this body of sin? But he said, praise be to God, only Jesus Christ can rescue us from hostilities of our human nature and even the evils of this world. The reason why we have to resist the hostilities around us our own demons is because the Bible tells us, Ephesians 6, 10 to 6, verse 12 says, Brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his, what? Of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may able to stand against the vials of the devil. Verse 12, for we do not wrestle against what? flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against power, against rulers of darkness of this age, against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. My friend, I would like to let you know the reason why our, our race and the marathons are we in, because we are battled not with flesh and blood, but with what? 
the principality of darkness. But the scripture tells us, put on the what? The whole armor. There's another sermon there, but we need the armor of God. External hostilities. Discipline. Demand of discipline. Demand us to what? Demand us that we may what? That we may endure the hostilities around us. The Bible tells us you are not of this world. You, we are not in the world but of this world. We are in the world but not of what? Of the world. We are foreigners. Heaven is our citizens. We are in this world, but not of this world. External hostilities. Endure. The question for us, how can we endure our journey? How can we endure? How can we survive? How can we resist? You know, the scripture tells us and gives us nuggets of things we can do to endure or even resist the threats, the attacks of this world as we journey in life. Whether financial journey, relationship journey, whether your spiritual journey. We talk about a rat race and a spiritual race. But Jesus when he was with his disciples in the book of Luke chapter 8 talks about they brought to him the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. And the religious leader said, Rabbi, teacher, what shall we do with her? And what did Jesus do? Sometimes we don't have to answer the question. Sometimes we what? We need to be silent. And Jesus say was silent, but he wrote on the what? On the on sand. When they press him again, Master, what shall we do? The one that we caught in the act of adultery. Jesus lifted up his head and he said, "Let any one of you, without sin, throw the what? The first stone." The first stone. And Jesus bent down and continued to ride on the sand. Interestingly, the Bible tells us, one by one, all those who came with the accusation left. And Jesus said to the woman, where are those people that brought you? What did the woman say? They all left. And Jesus said what? Go and sin no more. My friend, this morning, how can we resist the hostilities of our world today? Resist the bending pressures of the multitude, of the crowd. Oftentimes, we live in society today, there is no more, no more moral absolute. Is that right? Whatever the popular view, it seems like we sway because it seems like we are the only one who become very weird in what we believe. What Jesus said, do not bend to the pressures of the majority. When Jesus and God the creator, he is the what? He is the majority. My friend, the external hostilities not only the pressures of things or material world of this world is hurting us and help make us compromise our values. But also, we live in a society of what? Of abundance. We never satisfy. We always want for what? One more. Are you with me, church? The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye. Everywhere we turn, the world is 
fighting against our, our interest and our, our attentions. Never be satisfied. I would like to submit to you this morning. The Bible tells us Jesus said, resist the what? The pressures of the material things of this world. Even curiosities. Do you know scientists, in their premise of searching the reality, they're always curious. And they have to search their, 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 their hypothesis in order to prove the reality. Sometimes they, if they're not proven, and they will have some logic behind it. That's why they say there's no God. But remember, curiosity kills the what? Kills the cat. We know that whether we scientifically proven there is no way that the human mind can wrap around your head in the, what the idea of God is good. External hostilities. We can only find peace knowing the one who created us. And he brought his son into this world to be one of us. The external hostilities, but also internal hostilities. The threats. Our own demons that we wrestle with it. How can we save ourselves from our own misery? The Bible always talks about those intimate struggles of life. Do you know the story of Joseph, right? We know it, we read it. What do we learn from the story of Joseph? Do you know when Joseph saw his brother came, came begging for food? What happened to Joseph? We always try to be nice and give Joseph the benefit of a doubt. Is that right? That's how we read the scripture. Oh, Joseph's a good guy, so he loves it. I'm telling you, Joseph wrestled with the issues of life. Oh, these are my brothers that were, they, they abused me and they sold me. It's a time to what? Pay back. Are you with me, church? We are all human. <laughs> Joseph wrestled with the issue. These are, these are the people that sold me. Look at them. They are now coming begging for help. Internal conflicts. How can we wrestle with it? How can we find peace with ourselves? As we journey this year, not only the hostilities and the threats of the external things around us, but also our own demons with us. How can we deal with it? I could imagine Joseph just could not sleep. How, what could I do? Shall I just kill them all? How would you do if you were Joseph? How would you do? Wrestle with our own issues in life. I would like to assure you this morning, sometimes we put up good faces, but we wrestle with what? Self-righteous hypocrisy of our human nature. Is that right? Have mercy on us. Joseph wrestled with, how can I pay them back? How can I be so certain that they are repent? Isn't that what Joseph did? He made sure that they, 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 are not, they are not a threat, they are not in danger of his life anymore. So he put it in the process of what? Of checking all the box. Are you with me, church? We're talking about lending money to our family to see if they can pay us back. In our lesson study this morning. Is that right? We try to check all the box to see if they will pay us back. Wrestles with issues of internal issues of our lives. How would you deal with that? Have mercy on us. But the Bible tells us this morning. The redeeming of our own struggle. Have God in mind. Are you with me church? 
in order to set us free from our, our hostilities of our own demons, is to what? Fear God. God in mind. Joseph, fear God. Remember that woman that came and tried to lure Joseph to sleep with her? What did Joseph said? How can I sin against my God? Because he won because he had God in his mind. I have the confessions with you. Oftentimes I don't think of God, but I think of material world of this world, things of this world. What about you? We need to have God in our heart and mind. We need to understand the principles and the discipline and the requirements of God for us. Can we say amen? If we don't have God in mind, if we don't have the principle of God in us, if we don't live by the moral principle of God, we will do everything that we want. How's your journey this year? The Bible tells us, Romans chapter 12, I love this passage. I beseech you, my friends, my brothers, in the name of the Lord, what? Submit yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and blessing to God, because that is our duties. Is that right? No wonder why. In order for us to resist the hostilities of this world, internally and externally, we need to have what? Conform our mind, not to the world, but what? In renewing of our mind, in a fear of the Lord. In the same scripture, in the beginning, that we start our new year in a passage, we are running the race. The whole multitude is watching us. Your family. Your friends, your church, your co-workers, your children watching us. Not only that, we have the witness of God watching us from afar. God himself is watching you. The, the devil himself is watching us. But the Bible tells us, look upon Jesus, the offer and the finish of our faith, who had the joy that was set before him, endure the cross. What's the rest of the passage? Who despising the shame and sat down in the right hand of the Father, of the throne of the Father. Can you say amen? In order for us to run the race. In order for us to finish the race. We need to have a what? Demand of discipline. A discipline of knowing the external and internal struggle we have. And looking upon Jesus, the offer and the finisher of what? Of our faith. Because of the what? For the joy that was set before him. Can you say amen? Running the race with the certainty of support and our eyes upon Jesus. It's a joy for the Christians. What demands of discipline. The passage continue to say, consider him who endure hostilities for, from sinners against his word. The rest of the passage say, lest you become weary and discouraged in your what? In your souls. The demands of discipline, not only we have to resist the hostilities around us, but also become a what? A role model of strength for the weary. Can you say Amen. A role model for a strength for those around us. Role model of righteousness. The Bible tells us, book of Isaiah, we know the passage well. It talks about a servant Messiah. Surely he has borne our grief and carry our sorrow, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our what? transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, just judgment for our 
for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are what? We are healed. Be a role model of strength for somebody. Role models of righteousness. We are, up. We are running the race. We are running the race with our eyes focused on Jesus. Not only we can resist the hostilities of what's around us and also the threats of our own struggle. But it said, Jesus said, be a what? Be a role model of righteousness. How can we be a role model in a world that is dying? You may ask, Pastor, how can we be a role model in a world that is, that is sick with evil? How can we be a role model in a, in, a, in, a, in a world that is so furious and have no mercy for the word of God? How can we be role models for that? Just to be relevant in our studies, we live in a society today, we are struggle with what? Gender identity crisis. Have mercy on us. Whether we speak about it or what, it's an elephant in the room. Are you with me, church? Education systems honor what? Preference of choice. They emphasize that parents should not be interfered with the decisions of their children. They choose whatever they want to choose. Are you with me? Not only that, but they what? Hate speech intolerance. We cannot speak about those choices. I don't know about you, but when we look at our society today, have mercy. How can be a role model in a society that what? That throw moral, biblical moral views as irrelevant. How can be a role model to the world that is totally throw the biblical principles as irrelevant? Have mercy on us, what you say. I will let you let you know the Bible is fairly consistent with the predictions of what happened with our journey today. Being a Christian is a life of struggle. It's a life of discipline. It's discipline with a certainty that we have, we are not alone in our journey. Luke chapter 21, 12 says, But before all these things, they shall lay their hands on you and shall persecute you, deliver you to the what? To the synagogue and prisons, bringing you before the kings and governor for what? For, whose na for his name's what? I will let you let you know, we are reaching the point the world is, host is hostile to those who believe in the confessions of God's providence. How can you be a role model in a world that is dying? How can you be an example to those who are going to harm us? I will let you assure you this morning, the Bible tells us we can be a role model by what? Having the attitude of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? amen? Let not your heart be troubled. We can be a role model to the world by what? Having whose attitude? If it's my attitude, you get back, you do that to me, I'll get back to you. Is that right? But the attitude of Jesus. What is the attitude of Jesus? Bless other poor in spirit. Because there is what? There is heaven in praising that our need of God. Blessed are the mourners. Experience our mourn because our mourns and our sadness and our suffering will be what? Turn into joy. What did you say? Blessed are the meek. Choosing humble, submissive, over ambitious of authority. Blessed are the hunger and righteousness because they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful because incredible 
compassion of mercy will be given to them. Pure in hearts will be called the children of God. Peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. How can we be a role model in a world that is what? That is hostile to us. Have the what? Have the attitude of Jesus Christ. What you say? I no longer live, but who lives in me? Christ lives in me. Blessed are those persecuted because following Jesus, no matter what the cost, there is heaven and there is resurrection and there is eternal life forevermore. Book of Hebrew gives us examples after the example. How can we win the battle? How can we win the race? Not only we're we looking about Jesus, but now we're looking at the aspects. The aspect of what? Demand of discipline. Required the combustions and also the what the determinations of our willingness to embrace not only watching with Jesus and walk with Jesus, but also what? Have the attitude of Jesus. Be a role model to the world. Lastly, we're just submit to you. The end of the passage says, and you have forgotten the exaltation which speak to you as sons. What have you forgotten? And it says, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. Mean the discipline of the Lord. Nor be discouraged. This, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Scorch every man whom he receives. The language is very harsh. But actually God says he loved the one that he what? He disciplined. We love our children. And that's why we keep them what? Discipline. We love our children and we give them guidance. So to God loves us. What does the message for us, we need to cherish the word of discipline. Cherish the word of God. It's like a double-edged sword that pierces in our heart and mind, pierces to our bones and marrow, and strike to the discerner of the mind and the decisiveness of the soul. Cherish the word of God. To close our message this morning, you know, when Joseph saw his brother, he was wrestled with his own demons. Shall I repay them back? But because God won in his heart, he finally gathered them together. And what did he say? When they know that this is Joseph, they were confessing to him. And Joseph said, what you intend to be evil turned out to be what? A Plans of God in honor for the redemptions of, of our people. Can you say amen? amen? Cherish the word. If we're not for God's word, Joseph could easily annihilate and destroy his own siblings. But he loves the word. This world's is going without fearing God. I would like to commend you this morning. Fear the Lord. And love the word of God. We know the story of Job. All the miserable things happened to Job after lost his children. Destroy his prosperity. I'm glad that God did not allow those things happen to me, but it happened to Job. He lost everything, and his wife came to him, Job, why you continue to hold on to God? Why don't you just curse God and die? I praise be to God. Job cherished the word of the Lord. What you say? What did he say? You speak. As one of the fullest women. Shall we indeed accept 
good from God and not accept diversity, adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his sleep or with his heart to God. Because why? I came from my mother's womb without clothes. I will return without clothes. Praise be to God. I would like to submit to you. Cherish the word of God. Be a role model. Role models of righteousness. Have the attitude of Jesus. And also. Wrestle. Endure the hostilities of this world. How? Looking about Jesus, the finisher and the offer of our faith. He completed the race for us. And you're not alone. He guaranteed. Come unto me, all who are weary and what? And I will give you what? Give you peace and rest. Rest in this dying world, peace of the Lord in this dying world, and we can declare my God, my salvations. Not I, but Christ lives in me. May God bless you. May God bless your journey. Wrestles with the things of this world and focus your eyes upon Jesus. We can surely cross the finish line when there is no death, no more mourn, no more cry, but all things will what? Make new. Shall we pray? Father God, bless your people this morning. Help us as we start our journey. Help us not to lose heart. Thank you for Jesus. Help us to be an example. Help us to have the attitude of Christ. Help us to cherish the word. Set us free. And give us peace. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.